Hi everyone, welcome to Got Therapy. I'm Michael Baltimore. I'm here with Dr. Dan Rose. Dan, how are you today? Peachy. All right, there we go. So um, we're here today to talk about mental health, psychology, what goes on in counseling, uh, psychotherapy, and the things behind it. So we want to spend some time today talking about things of that nature. You know, in last week's episode, uh, we, we talked a, a lot about how to deal with the impact of, um, of stress, really, and some of those traumatic events that have happened in the world. Um, and so um, I, think, I think it was very important that we, we actually talked on how we might manage that, build up some uh, resilience and, and being in that moment and allow the uh, impact uh, for us to feel the impact mm. um, and also to take that breath. Mm. And, and then you said something very interesting. I want to follow up just mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. about it. You used the term leaning in. Leaning in. Mm -hmm. And um, I was wondering maybe if you could talk about that for a second, just to kind of recap from the last mm -hmm. show, and then mm -hmm. we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. So leaning in, what is that? Well, it's a way of sort of um, allowing yourself to be able to be in the presence of the thing you're feeling. So uh, you, when you lean in, you cultivate a, a certain, um, you're sort of observing and uh, allowing yourself to experience what's happening with you. And you do that with other people. Like, um, uh, it's often easy to illustrate this, what not leaning in would be. Let's say um, you're sitting at home, you took the day off, you're laying on the, uh, sitting on the couch uh, in your underwear watching some Andy Griffith. Okay. Um, or some, um, you know, um, The View. I don't know about you, but I'm a big fan of that show. So okay. you're watching The View, and your it's wife nice comes in, and she notices that you have done nothing, but you've been sitting on it. And she, she comes in and she starts, she starts to get angry. She gets angry. She yells at you. Right. Okay. If you begin yelling back, that would be an example of not leaning in. But not. if you allowed yourself to take a breath and you lean in, you might say, wait a minute, my wife's had a long day. She may have come in and had seen my leisure, my, uh, my uh, uber leisure activities may have triggered some things in her. There may be, by leaning in, I can na help name exactly what she's experiencing. And I might be able to be present for her in a way that I, 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 I wasn't before. You can do the same for yourself. If, if uh, for instance, I woke up this morning uh, right. not in the best mood. Okay. I wasn't, I was Sorry a, to hear a that, little actually. cranky. I was yes, a little well, cranky. It happens you know, to us all. I, I, I blame Ivanka Trump. But, okay. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. But as an aside, this yes. is one of the things I've been thinking about too along the way. Am I sure. wrong, but do one of Trump's sons look like the guy from American Psycho? Such as me? Um, I don't. I'll leave that up to the audience uh, that are watching <laughs> just, to just, make just, that but determination. But they really, they, but yes. so I'm, okay, I woke up, I was kind of cranky. So okay. if, you, if you allow yourself to, to, to take a breath, sort of allow yourself to give name to, oh, I'm cranky, and then you lean and you ask yourself, what, what is right. this? So you, you allow yourself, you, you give a, a place at the table for that experience, and then you might be able to name it. You might be able to give it a coordinate somewhere in your life. It may have a history, brief or long, and at that moment, you were leaning in, literally sort of dancing with your experience in such a way that you might be able to do something with it. There's a famous saying by the Buddhists, no mud, no lotus. What that means is that without, without suffering, without these emotional turmoil, you have no way to be able to build the thing that will become the flower. Okay. All right. That's very good. So, so when we have that uh, impact from mm -hmm. stress or some other mm -hmm. situation that happens in our lives, we might need to take that breath mm -hmm. and just give ourselves mm -hmm. a little bit of pause as opposed to being reactive to, mm -hmm. which may not be leaning mm -hmm. in. All right, thanks. That, that help, helps out a lot. You just talked about suffering. I know we've had a conversation a little bit about the art of mm -hmm. suffering. Mm -hmm. um, that may be our topic for today. Can you talk a little bit mm -hmm. about that? And what, what kind of thoughts do you have about About suffering. Notion? Yes, suffering. Don't well, we all suffer? See, I think th this is really important because we spend most of our trying time uh, trying not to suffer. You know, right? In fact, um, yeah, uh, push back. You know, we 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 head out to the beach with this idea that we're going to have a, a suffering-free week. So we sort of think, okay, you know, for fifty-one <laughs> weeks of the uh, year, suffering fifty-one, we're going to be suffer-free. We 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 consume right. a great deal of um, of um, of confectionaries. Can I, is that a word? Confectionaries? No, I think you just said it, yes. Uh, candy Plural. bars. Uh, we, 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 we do lots of things that take us away, at least temporarily, from this notion of suffering. You know? Yes. 
It's sort of like, you know, the, the food version of Calgon. But nobody's going to get this because nobody remembers Calgon. Right? Calgon takes you away. Takes you away, that's right. Yeah, but no, no one's going to get commercial. this. That's, that's just, it depends on the age of the audience of the viewer. Uh, maybe uh, they can pick that up. I think the not, average yeah. age of this audience is about four, four and a half years old. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, I'm not going to go There's a lot there. of nose I'm picking really... going on while about people are watching oh, this no. thing. Oh, no. Here we go. <laughs> but, yeah, so we're trying to always avoid the suffering. That's, mm -hmm. our, that's our major... Uh, theme, if you will. That's, that's sort of our, our go-to reaction mm -hmm. to, to suffering. But you're saying something different. So I think suffering. we have to get better at it. As opposed to avoiding it, get better at it. Develop the, 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 the muscles. Be able to appreciate the texture and grain of your suffering. Wow. Be able to see it. Uh, for uh, the, the, There's a, um, a famous aesthetic experience by a philosopher who says, you know, if you're out in a boat and the fog rolls in, uh, you have two p p potential, potential uh, ways to experience that the blind terror of suddenly being trapped in the fog, or you can generate an aesthetic experience to be able to allow yourself to be able to experience the texture and grain of the fog. Now, in one way, that's a lousy example because that guy's going to die. Yeah, there's, but, a big, there's a big ship, the cruise ship. <laughs> and that's you smashed. Him. Yes, absolutely. But you can allow yourself to turn. One of my, I like this guy, Wilfred Bion, you know? Have yes. I ever talked about this guy? No, you have. Well, one of, his one of, one of, one of these post bionian guys, he's an Italian dude. Sivaratisi is the guy's name. Okay, we're he in sounds new like, territory now. That sounds yes. like a wonderful thing to eat, by the way. I'll have the Sivaratisi. <laughs> that's an Italian flavor. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it does. Right. Yeah, but this guy talks about how we should generate, we should turn our world into art. We should generate aesthetic experience. So part of the art of suffering is allowing ourselves to be experience our suffering as best we can with texture and grain, to be able to, to be open to it in a way that we might be able to then maybe do something with it. Seems to be a, uh, that this is a regular occurrence in our lives. We're, mm -hmm. we're dealing with some sort of stress, as we've talked mm -hmm. about here on the show. Uh, mm -hmm. But it seems like there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of hurt, there are a lot of circumstances that come at us for mm -hmm. that that may... Uh, begin that process of suffering. So pain, someone said, uh, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. And I think when we think about that is, is that um, when, when we allow ourselves to be good at suffering, we don't feed it. We're not generating more of it. And I think that, 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 that's an important goal. And um, in fact, the, the proper response, once one has been able to identify one's suffering, dance with it a bit, is to be able to generate some sort of compassion, whether it's for others or yourself. Right. right. Even for yourself. In, in, I think in yourself situation. is very important because, uh, I mean, um, uh, the, the ability to be able to, to reflect on the fact that, first off, as you get older, more and more parts of you hurt. Am I wrong? Uh, you're absolutely it's just, right. It's a thing that happens, that. right? Yes, yeah, absolutely the, the, right. There, there is a I relatively can... pain-free, not pain-free, but there's a window at which basic mo movement doesn't generate pain, and there's a certain part where it starts to. Am I wrong? That is correct. It's, you know, looking in the mirror yeah, sometimes. also <laughs> begins to generate a certain amount of pain. <laughs> there's a certain would... suffering. Yes. Uh, anybody seeing yourself nude. At a certain point, that, begins that to, be, to generate that could a certain be an issue. Yes. you know what went wrong. If I'm, I'm just yourself. wondering how we turn the corner on this conversation. <laughs> uh, well, back to, uh, to, go to managing it in some ways. Yeah. Right. <laughs> compassionate nudity. We, we but, should but really being compassionate about this uh, this stressful situation. It also mm -hmm. raises your anxiety. Suffering is is loaded. I guess it could be that uh, suffering may be. Um, anxiety as well as depression. So both of those things can actually mm -hmm. the, kind of the, bring on suffering, a, anxiety and depression. There is a certain type of suffering and depression. Am I wrong? That there is a certain texture and grain. There, there is a certain thing. But what often happens with the depression, and I see this all the time with, 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 with my patients, people come in to see me, they often answer their suffering with, with ridicule. They say things like, I shouldn't feel this way, I'm weak. They, they speak to themselves in a way that actually fuels and feeds the suffering, right? Yeah, I think so. I think mm -hmm. we kind of reinforce things. We get mm -hmm. kind of stuck in, in something and it's on and sort of a cyclic or a treadmill type mm -hmm. of scenario. I think the cognitive behavioral people talk about this mm -hmm. notion of how we think affects how we feel. So, you know, modifying the thinking. Uh, that's mm -hmm. a big push in, in psychotherapy and psychology in general is this notion of, you know, managing, getting control of how you think about mm -hmm. circumstances mm -hmm. and that will give us some relief. It's, it's in some ways you're talking about m modification of this suffering. You're talking about being able to recognize that it's happening mm -hmm. but yet do something with that. Uh, it, it, you, you can even 
You know, and you mentioned the CBT word, which uh, generates suffering in me. I but, know, I know. I, I hesitated to mention <laughs> but that, no, I, but I, can't, I, I, can't, I, I can't. thought it was appropriate at the time. Sorry where, about Where that. I might, and I think with your, how many, there's like, we're on our fifth or sixth wave of CBT. Whatever, whatever wave we're on now, right, they may be right. different about Been this. Been around for a while. But, but what, one, one problem I might have with some of the CBT techniques is that um, they, 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 they attempt to offer a solution they don't always maybe offer a way to be better at suffering. And I think that's a slightly different turn. Okay. It's not enough to be able to find some way to stop the suffering. So that's certainly, that's our goal. But in doing that, we often, we ha I think we have to get better at it. And, and, and that may require a philosophical position to be able to ask yourself, what is the role of suffering in your life? Why, why, why is it there? Before you want to take it out of your life, you may want to have a sense of what it means. And I think that's where our Buddhist brothers and sisters, when they, when they talk about the role of pain and suffering, as long as you don't feed it, it has a place in your life. That's, again, no mud, no lotus. It, it, is, it is a necessary part of being able to become who you are. So it's, it's that we have put up, um, or we've adopted a strategy of pushing back, of trying to block out suffering. Um, Which causes suffering. Which, which, well, it causes, which fact, actually I would say, if you're going to get, let, let, get a little political here. Okay, go. I think part of what fuels our consumption and may or may not be causing our whole civilization to teeter on the brink of extinction, at its root is an attempt to move as quickly away from suffering as possible. And by, by embracing our own suffering and being compassionate to ourselves, we open up the possibility of being more open to other people as well, more compassionate to other folk. Okay, you've used the word compassion mm -hmm. uh, several times here about this, this notion of suffering and in some way to understand that suffering is a part of life and have some compassion. Talk about that a little bit more. How do we, where, well, okay, where yeah, does it, that start? You know, one of the things we, we do with um, tra training, uh, training folks in this, this, this mental health field thing we do. Absolutely, you know? yes. Um, one of the things you have to cultivate is the capacity for compassion. And there are often folks who come to see you, and the reason they come to see you is they've literally driven everybody else in their life insane. That the, 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 the window of folks who are willing to listen to them and put up with them is narrowed to the point where it's almost nothing, right? I think so. So part of the skill is you develop the capacity through leaning in, we'll use that word again. Uh, that re to, to do that requires you, uh, I, um, uh, I often, we, I'll use this as an example. Uh, um, uh, we were talking about this in seminar the, uh, the other week. You may have someone who comes in who may begin to say some horribly racist things. Or right. an example, something ho ho horribly misogynistic. Right. Let's you say a patient who comes in. From our last session, you were talking. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yes. So somebody absolutely. comes in and they say, you know, and, and it's a female therapist, and they're going on about how, uh, you know, all women are bad, all women are this. They start throwing around words, you know, horrible words, four-letter words. Women are this and, this and this and this and this. And as a female therapist, you are sitting across from this. Right. So your capacity, how do you have compassion for someone who's being ugly? How do you have com compassion for someone who is at least indirectly trying to bite you too? If you allow yourself to first notice your own suffering, right yes. now it is difficult to be in the room with this person. It is tough to experience, to be, to keep my heart open in the face of this person in front of me. You take that breath, you give yourself permission to feel what you're feeling, and then you make use of that to say, well, what is it that might be pushing this person to push me away? What is it that might be in the room right now? And then you have the capacity to lean in and then you might be able to say, underneath this, these diatribes, uh, underneath this, um, uh, what they're saying is, is a history of rejection from women. And they're in, they're in the, a room with another woman. They are staring across, they're seeing me as, either, as a potential rejector. They have been hurt and just my mere presence is pushing the wound that they brought with them into the room. And so in doing that, you're then able to stay in the room, listen in a certain way, and maybe even be able to point out to them what they're really feeling under their anger, to be able to say, I can hear your hurt. And you, for some folks, you have to hold on to that for a long time before they can hear what you, what you see in them. So that's, an, and that's, that's sort of, uh, I think, uh, in with, to practice therapy, you have to dare, it's, you have to have sort of uh, compassion on steroids sometimes to be right. able to, uh, to do that. Well, that was a great example, and I appreciate you sharing that with us because um, it, it, it also sounds like it's not easy to do, to sort of put yourself aside. It's the self and other. Mm. It's this notion of, uh, of really 
um, as you've been saying for the last several times we've met now, this, uh, this idea of absorbing, taking the hit, taking the pause, and then leaning in, and that really is about you. And, and actually, this, that's a skill that we can all build, not just mm -hmm. therapists in training and the mental health workers we're talking about, but for people in everyday life, we like can couples. be able to do this. Like right? we, we, we talk about this before, like if, if, right. if you, in a marriage, for instance, if there's ever a place where you have to be able to find a way to be compassionate, yeah, we often give our worst to our spouses the, or the, any of the loved ones in our life. They're, they're people that often see the more jagged parts of ourselves. Right. And so when we, it's, it's often difficult to be able to lean in and experience that compassion uh, for yourself or the other. But this is, just, and it's a skill like any other. That's why I was yeah. sort of talking about it's, is the it's, art of. This is something you have to practice. Right. Know? And if you practice it enough, you won't vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew we were some, at some point going down that road. But, but I, I, it is like a, it's muscle memory. It's this notion mm. of practice. It's just putting it in play so that when you take that, and if you're a person that uh, mm. uh, often encounters that type of stress or confrontation, that kind of thing coming at you, you have to build up um, a, a strategy, a, a response in you, and being able to take uh, not not necessarily be the reactive and the human side of it, but mm -hmm. step out just a little bit mm -hmm. to be able to see that and respond in a positive way that's going to help. Therapists have to do that. I think all of us could benefit by mm -hmm. that. So that's an interesting notion, and I like the idea of art. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's and an aesthetic. It's a way, of, and, and it's something that that allows you to be creative. To and one of the ways to think about this from an affect theory perspective is that you know we have a we have a full crayon box of affect. We have different colors and nuances, and the more we can color, with, the more we can expand our crayon box and color with them, the more we can we can create the sort of life for ourselves and the people around us and the world. This all sort of fans out in all different directions, and, and that that requires that requires effort. That requires that requires training. But it also uh, it just seems to me this is just my thought in the moment. But it, it, there's a maturity that comes with this. Do you be able to mm -hmm. to deal with the impact of these emotional mm -hmm. moments and stressful moments and trauma moments? Mm -hmm. um, that takes time. It takes growing. Mm -hmm. It takes a certain level of maturity, well, and then practice with that to get. I don't get better think the word it. maturity often is used in a sentence referring to me, but, uh, <laughs> but my wife certainly would. Right. Would, right, uh, right. Others would, that you know around. Would you, disagree but, with it. But do I hear what you're saying? It requires a capacity to to be alive and to stay alive. One of my favorite quotes from my man Donald Winnicott is, I hope I am alive when I die. And the idea is that when you're in this place of leaning in and mindfulness and connection, you are alive. And so, but I think it's possible to be on this earth for 90 years and not truly be alive. I think that was his quote. So it is maturity that certainly requires some time, but it requires practice to stay alive to generate the level of maturity that you need. Wow, yeah, and I appreciate that. And the notion that there's a certain power that comes with that as mm -hmm. well, and sort of you're more in control. Um, and that is part of this process of responding to trauma, responding to stress, and then uh, dealing with the suffering that we all have. All right, well, I like our conversation today. It, uh, it, uh, began I only mentioned nudity a, a couple of times. You know, you were very well I'm behaved sure today. I'd like the was, audience, uh, all of us appreciate but that. But you guys out there, extent, tell me if I'm wrong. Okay, here does we that, go. Does that, does that Trump kid not look like that guy from American Psycho? I just thought, I, when I saw it, I was like, you know, this is, this is. Not a hair out of place. Yeah, and you uh, know, it's sort of, of those kind of you know, that, that look about. Mm. Yeah, so I don't know if it's uh, got that. It's got, he's got that. I and mean, he may be a wonderful human being, and I don't want to disparage anybody, but right. just at a glance, trust fund psychopath. That's that's the that's the feeling again. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm not, well, it's, I'm uh, not, leave it up to you to put that phrase forward like that, yeah. and maybe it'll catch on. And maybe, maybe, so maybe it'll catch on. Yeah, put that on the Twitter, and maybe that's going to take off with that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here and watching today. This has been Got Therapy. I'm Michael Baltimore, Dr. Dan Rose, Counseling Center at Columbus State University. We're happy that you've joined us. And once again, tune in to Got Therapy. We'll see you next time.